Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to a Thursday afternoon episode of Ted's Booze Cellar with me, your most gracious host Ted. It is around about quarter to five on the 28th of December 2023 and today is the last episode of the year or rather the last episode of season four. So I thought considering I haven't done a Christmas themed beer this year yet, I thought I might as well do one for the last episode of the year. Now just to update you, the next season, or season 5, will be commencing in the second week of January of 2024. So, for today's episode we're going to be taking a look at a Christmas beer from my cousin and his girlfriend. And this is the Christmas Ale by Castle Eden Brewery. And it says on the back here on the box, or rather the container as it were, Castle Eden Christmas Chestnut Ale. A classic seasonal winter ale brewed with locally grown barley and English hops, perfectly blended to give a malty, slightly nutty hop flavour to savour. It says here ingredients of water, malted barley, it does contain gluten so be careful about that, hops, yeast, chestnut flavour, and it does say here though that this product does not contain nuts, which is good. It's a 3.8 percenter, and I've got to say I do really like the design of the packaging, very Christmassy, simple, nice set of colours. All very archetypally Christmas colours. You've got sort of forest green, red and white there, so that looks nice. And a simple but very detailed, at the same time, drawing of Santa Claus there, holding a nice draught of beer there. So, yeah, it's a good designed package. I really like this, and I think I'll give it a 10 out of 10. I just like the simplicity of it. I like the contrast of the colours. You know what you're getting in for, and it gives the right impression in terms of what you'd be going in for in terms of like a chestnutty, oaky kind of Christmas ale. So yeah, I like the look of that. It does say very little on the brewery on their website actually. So all it says really is that the Castle Eden Brewery has been a constant part of the Northeast brewing scene since it was founded by John Nimmo in 1826. Located in County Durham under the Nimmo family, the brewery grew to an annual capacity of 75,000 barrels with an estate of 125 pubs. In 2014, the brewery assets were acquired by the present owners and relocated to Seam. So there's not a lot of information on their website, to be honest, which is a bit strange, but to be fair, they seem like a pretty well-established bunch, so they should know what they're doing, as far as I can see, although I don't want to put any pressure on anyone for any unnecessary reasons. So yeah, I want to say as well, thank you to my cousin and his girlfriend for getting me this beer. Ooh, nice. Oh, I like the design of the label on the bottle as well. It's got a good nice sort of wooden bluish background there which is very nice against the green and red and white on the label so that's very handsome indeed yeah nice it's very very nice indeed all right so we'll give the label and bottle a 10 out of 10 for sure now the smell so oh, the noses of christmas beers in the past have been a bit of a hit and miss so this could be good, it could be average, but we'll see when we taste it and when we properly have a snifter. And also, this is another one of the Christmas gifts I got. It's a Stella Artois themed bottle opener, which some more family members got me, which was very nice of them. And it's very, very much appreciated, so just going to leave that there. But anyway, let's have a quick sniff to see what our first impressions are like. Oh, it's a little bit chocolatey, actually, I mean, in the sense of like bitter dark cocoa. Mm, it's got this dark cocoa-y undertone. This sort of slightly oaky through line and then a very chestnutty and co sweet cocoa sort of after smell. There's not much like sort of Christmas spice nose feel there. But I think the flavours in the nose there do actually combine together really well. A little bit chocolatey at the end, a little bit dark cocoa y throughout, a bit of an undertone or through line I should say of dark oak and then this this sort of like forest sort of oakiness kind of chestnut after smell very simple but it's a very very nice nose to be sure so yeah in the bottle the nose is a honestly it's a 10 it smells great i can't really fault it too much but obviously i do want to sort of give it a fair impression so i'm going to try pouring it into one of my tankards and see if we can give it a slightly different review in terms of the nose when it's in a glass Let's see Nice colour actually. A little bit dark and hazy, but not too dark either way. So yeah, that's looking very nice. Oh yeah, okay, so I think it does smell a bit better in the bottle in comparison to a lot of beers where they obviously do smell better in the glass and they have more room to breathe. 
in the glass it's got this underlying harshness to the after smell but it's not completely terrible it's like it's a good nose actually still and I'd probably still rate it like an 8 out of 10 to be honest but I don't know it's strange like the smell in the bottle was genuinely a bit nicer I don't know that's rather strange actually that's the first time I think I can remember a bottled ale like this smelling better in the bottle but I don't know, I've been surprised before by the fact that two separate companies decided to make cans Bloody Marys but anyway we'll have ourselves a quick palate cleanser first before we drink this so remember in the bottle the nose was a 10 out of 10 and in the glass it was an 8 out of 10 now on to the most important part of the video and again to my cousin and his girlfriend massive thank you very very much appreciated and I'm glad that you got me such a well thoughtful gift to be the subject of the last episode of the year. And to everyone at home, thank you for your support this year. Looking forward to 2024 and season 5 and starting things up again in the second week of January. And as always, bottoms up. Let's see what the supper tastes like. Mm, interesting mouthfeel. It's got, it's got an interesting texture to it. Not the smoothest texture, but it's compulsively drinkable for sure. Nice wet sort of aftertaste texture to it. And then the main flavour itself is... Um, yeah. Kind of sort of mildly oaky, chestnutty kind of flavour. It's pretty much the majority of the flavour there. And while it is very simple and it's very singular in its flavour, it's full-bodied and the flavour that is there doesn't contrast too harshly against the texture, so the two actually complement each other quite well in fact. And so the simplicity of the drink actually works to its favour I would say in this case. Yeah, and it's got this very, this, so obviously the main through line of the flavour is this sort of oaky chestnutty ness but then it's sort of like this aftertaste of slightly bitter cocoa, which is something that I really like drinking around the holidays, because I don't I don't mind hot chocolate, but I prefer dark cocoa that's a little bit bitter, to be honest. But this is really good. Yeah, so the main through line of the flavour is sort of this oaky chestnutty mist, and then it's got this aftertaste that's capped off that is mildly bitter cocoa, and then it's got this undertone of very, very, very mild Christmassy spices. I'm getting a sense of, you know, cinnamon a little bit, and some kind of other spice around the holidays possibly nutmeg perhaps but yeah very very simple flavors but they all combine together to make a very very compulsively drinkable drink there's just a little bit of something i think that could contrast the oakiness in this beer and like i said the texture could be a little bit smoother but generally speaking i think this is a very very compulsively drinkable beer and it is a fantastic gift to give someone who does like these kind of beers so absolutely to my cousin and his girlfriend massive thank you this is very very much appreciated and i'm more than happy to give it a very 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 respectable eight and a half out of ten this is a very very nice beer really smooth good mix of flavors that contrast nicely against each other and extremely simple and it's compulsively drinkable to first time dark beer drinkers thoroughly thoroughly recommended and yeah i would go out of my way to get this again not just because of the fact that the packaging is really handsome to be honest as well so yeah Thank you very much, guys. But yeah, if you guys like this video, leave a like, share, and subscribe if you have any suggestions for future episodes of Ted's Boo Cellar or anything that I should do in 2024. Let me know in the comments section down below. And if you liked what I did in this video, be sure to check out my other social medias in the video description as well. And until next time, and for the last time in Season 4 and 2023, have fun, stay safe. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. Wash your hands, drink responsibly, know your limits, and I'll see you guys at the bar next year in Season 5 on Ted's Booster. Bye-bye for now.